a lot of the, my initiations have been from women too. My first like couples of relationships, I like rejecting them. I don't want to be in a relationship with you. I just continuously end relationships and start new ones until I got to a point where actually now it's me. Yeah, at what point could you go, I'm going to start accepting what this woman in a woman's body is going to give me? I feel like it's an ongoing choosing. The practice that we bring into our relationship is like continually choosing to meet each other in an open way. We have a simple practice of like, am I open or am I closed right now? If I'm closed, then there's something here for me. If I'm open, then there's an opportunity to bring my gift. All right, Jacob, welcome. Mm. Thank you for being on my podcast. I feel honored to have you here. Now, you're in men's work. Yeah, would you would you agree with that? Yeah, man. Yeah, that's the that's my primary focus is men's work. Fantastic. So tell me about this journey because like men's work is, it takes a journey to get into that space. So tell us a little bit about what that journey has been like for you. I love telling this story. It's my favorite. So initially, I didn't really know what men's work was. I grew up playing sport. I grew up in um, going to regular school, doing regular things, pretty standard Australian upbringing in the country. Uh, however, I always had a desire to build community. I always had a desire for, for culture, a desire for like the greater vision. And I, I loved all of the hero movies. I loved all of the quests and all of the larger than life experiences that I witnessed through movies, through books, through my, my, my heroes in sport and especially action sports once I start to get into more of that individual flow. But then what happened for me was I got just stuck in a rut of got a nine to five, did uni, got a nine to five, went through the motions of just letting my subconscious direct me through my 20s. And it wasn't until I actually was called forward by my, my now wife, Meg. She asked me if I actually wanted to go on this adventure of life or if I was happy just doing the same thing over and over again. It wasn't that what I was doing was bad. It's just that it was, I was kind of locked into a specific way of being. I, I got a, I had a good job. There was a trajectory of making a little bit more money every, every year, a little bit more money, a little bit more money. Comfortable. It was a secure job. It wasn't going anywhere. So I kind of like just hit autopilot and I was, wasn't really in, I wouldn't say that I was living an inspired life, but I'd created a level of comfort that allowed me to live a certain life. Fast track, Meg presented me with this. She's like, I'm going here. I'm going on an adventure. I'm go- I want the. I want all of it. If you want to come, then I'd love for it to be you, but it doesn't have to be you. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of my, I, I reflect on it and I can, I can go into it on, uh, in depth and now isn't the time, but a lot of my initiations and early on initiations were sparked by women, by them calling me forward. And in the relationship space, a lot of the, my mentors and people I look up to, they, they talk about the feminine being the oracle. So it, it reveals or it invites the masculine to stand for or step into. So that was really an, 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 an invitation for me to start my the next phase of my journey. So that was it, man. And, and what happened there was we, we, we started to, we, we became part of a, a, I call it medicine family. So we, we, we started to experience ceremony, which was through plant medicine. And that's been, that was being like my driving force of expansion. So I did that. But what I found in that space was it was predominantly women. Now that has shifted majorly in the last seven years. I see a lot more men opening to psychedelics, opening to ceremony, to ritual, to earth-based spirituality. But initially when I went to Peru after experiencing uh, Wachuma, which is a mescaline from the cactus, uh, drank that, had a real beautiful, expansive moment where I dissolved into oneness with the trees, the water, the mountain. I was like, wow, I want to explore this more. This has something more for me. Went to Peru and I spent three weeks with 16 women. And at the end of that, I was like, I'm never fucking doing that again, (laughs) ever. (laughs) I love women. I adore women. I will witness and observe and bask in their beauty and their radiance for the rest of my life. Aho, aho, aho. (laughs) And this is not something that I want to, if I did to consciously choose, I would like to have more men around me because they offer a true reflection. And it wasn't until I started to spend more time with men. I got back home. The first thing I did was go to a men's group. I went to it. The age difference. So I was 24, 25 at the time, around 25. A lot of the men were in their 40s. So there was this disparity in age. I was like, man, I love this men's group, but there isn't that relatability. Mm. There's like wisdom and they can share stuff, but they're not at the same stage of life as me. So what I did was like, I'm starting a men's group. Started a men's group. We'd get in a circle and we'd just share what does it mean to be a man? What's your relationship with your father? What are your desires? What are your deepest fears? What's something that you've never told someone that you hold shame about? So we just start actually creating dialogue that was beyond the surface or beneath the surface. And from that, we started to just feel it was a real, 
practice of just opening to life. From there, man, it's been like this beautiful uh, journey of like men's work has been the true grounding of all of my spiritual teachings, all of my uh, all of my mental uh, complexities. All of it is sort of tied, tethered together by sitting in circle with men, going out into nature with men, because they offer me a true reflection of what it means to be a man. And I can sit in a circle and I can look at, I can, I can connect with each man. And there's a part of them that I'm triggered by. (laughs) And normally it's a part of myself that I haven't actually honored, accepted and integrated. And that doesn't happen personally for me. I'm sure it can happen in different ways, but for me, that doesn't happen with women. That doesn't happen with plants. That doesn't happen in breath work. That doesn't happen in an ice bath. It doesn't happen in a mindset transformative fear neutralization process. It happens by being around other men. And that's sort of led me to where I am today. Oh, wow. Jacob, that's, I love every single syllable mm-hmm. that you spoke to in that, bro. Um, yeah, I just want to bask in that, bro. Like I really feel mm-hmm. this, this journey of you, like you stuck in that nine to five. And then your partner, like this initiation from the women, from women mm. in your life. And it's like the partic- particular type of man that can receive that, that invitation to become something bigger. Mm. So like, that's huge, bro. And then um, and then the plant medicine piece, the wachuma. I've never had wachuma. I'd love, I'd love to sit that medicine. Mm. Um, so and I hear that. And being with the 16 women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Some stories. I can imagine some stories, bro. Mm. Being the only dude. And I for you to be there and being really bathed in all of that that feminine, that feminine embodiment, all that, that mm. feminine energy, that feminine space. Like that's so potent. Coming back home and then starting the, the men's group, joining that men's group and the age disparity. And yeah, totally like generational problems that like they get stuck in that the generational bandwidth, right? Mm. And that younger men need that other information that what's going on like what's going on socially what's going on culturally for them and then starting your own starting your own men's stuff and then finding that tribe piece that the, the tribal component in other men and and what brings you into your what what, what your grindstone like your axe your your crucifix whatever it is that you want to carry isn't with other men it's like yeah oh you triggered me like oh my god what is it about me that's not being integrated like I hear the potency in, in that work. But my mm. question for you in all of that, I mean, is multiples. Um, the main one is at what point, because for me on my journey, it's been a lot of the, my initiations have been from women too. And the, I'll reject them. Like my first like couples of relationships, I'm like rejecting them. I don't want to be in a relationship with you. So I, I, I just continuously end relationships and start new ones until I got to a point where actually now it's me. It's it's me in this. So what's been your journey with like at what point could you accept was it was Megs your partner, Megs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. At what point could you go, you know what? I'm gonna start accepting what this woman in a woman's body is gonna give me. I feel like it's an ongoing choosing. The practice that we bring into our relationship is like continually choosing to meet each other in in an open way. We we, we have a simple practice of like, am I open or am I closed right now? If I'm closed. Then it's a, then there's something here for me. If I'm open, then there's there's an opportunity to bring bring my gifts. Essentially, man, that that time that I spoke about when she said, "Are you coming on this adventure or not?" That was the first time I've really ever actually experienced a woman asking for what she wants, rather than me just being like, "Okay, a woman wants this. I'll just give her this based on what I know." So I grew up, as most men do, receiving a lot of not a lot of information from their parents, from their external environment. And I had this belief that when I commit to a woman, I get a job that is safe and secure. I start saving money and I prepare for buying a house and, and paying the bills and providing a, 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 a stable, safe environment for my, for my woman at, at, at all costs, yeah. including my own uh, passions. What I did was I completely neglected anything of mine my desires and I just gave what I thought my woman wanted mm. based on my own story. How so, did that how did that impact you? Like what was oh, that like for you to, to to do that? And I didn't have a healthy relationship. <laughs> I had a relationship with uh coping mechanisms, alcohol, partying, all those things. But yeah, I was the same. I was larger than life. And I had I had a very 
outward, loud, energetic expression. I, I, I rode BMX, I skated, I was really into action sports and like expressing myself in, in, in explosive ways. And it was as if the fire was just slowly going out and there was nothing being put back on the fire. So whilst Meg was in a relationship with someone who could be secure and safe and certain, there was a lack of passion, a lack of inspiration. She wasn't inspired by me. She didn't feel activated by me because I was just merely becoming a, a structure that kept her safe rather than something that met her in the deepest way possible. Because I wasn't meeting my deepest desires, my deepest needs. I wasn't cultivating that relationship with my core truth, which is what I see a lot of relationships get stuck in these days is that people do what they think they should do. And it works for an X amount of time. One, one, one of the two partners will then have an awakening of sorts. They'll go and do something that activates this deeper sense of self. And then this whole structure that they built together, they come back and say, hey, I no longer want this. And this person like well i've spent my life building it so what are we going to do yeah totally ah oh, you speak so well to like the relationship mm. patterns and and structure and i love that you're you am i open am i closed so mm. simple like so simple like check in all right am i open am i closed mm. and so so in that am i open am i closed what somatically did it take for you to get to that point to know when you were open or closed oh lots and lots and lots of feeling i was i am super sensitive so i'm body based predominantly if you want me to i can explain things in a responsive manner you ask me a question i can feel it communicate it but if you ask me to solve a complex mathematical thing i'm done i'm like can't feel it i don't want to do it i'm not that isn't my that isn't my that isn't what i that doesn't light me up for some men that stuff does but for me it doesn't so i've always been body based i've always felt into things and i temper that now with more i bring more of my intellectual by cultivating that but essentially i've done a lot a lot a lot of somatic work through working like i've worked with with plant medicines wachuma ayahuasca peyote psilocybin i've worked with all those for around seven or eight years wow so those wow. things have really cultivated some serious serious feeling capacity in my body, not only clearing out. So I see it as this, I see as my nervous system has stuff that has been stored there for years and years. So there's a practice of actually clearing that out and creating a clear nervous system, but then there's expanding it as well. So I've done a lot of work clearing my nervous system and expanding it. What I, yeah, what, 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 what can, what men can actually get caught up in, which is something that I remind them. I was like, you can keep expanding it, but if you're still filling your nervous system with bullshit, with more data that doesn't serve you, then it doesn't matter how big your capacity is, if you've been filling it with or you haven't been clearing it of all of those things that are still residually there, you're still going to find that you're triggered. You're still going to find that capacity to hold is limited by what you haven't somatically released. Mm. So, you know, I've done that. I've done a lot of breath work. I've done a lot of deep shadow work in men's workspaces. And the three things that have been clear for me were uh, shame around sexuality and inability to or an inability to process anger or rage, like like unbridled rage. And the third one was the ability to actually celebrate and and be goofy and have fun. Oh, dude. <laughs> Mm. Uh, speaking my language mm. i love this and i love your journey's been with the medicine and the shadow work and you've got to that point where you just have the knowing that it doesn't matter how much you keep on taking the medicines or whatever keep on expanding until you go back and have a look at whatever's like left in your body like somatically whatever you put whatever is there that, that, that's activating you that's not allowing you to hold that that, that container or that space mm. it's just wasting your time look it's a, it's a bit of a masturbation of like yeah cool i'm doing all this stuff but deep down like i'm missing the actual work to help create the space in my body definitely man and this is what happens a lot of a lot of people find breath work or they find uh they find the plants they find meditation they find nlp they find hypnosis they find eft they find tapping they find all of these things but what they what they do is they tap into something slightly deeper but they never actually go to the core and i and, and the core is constantly revealing itself as you know i'm, I'm still uh, revealing more and more of Same. my power. And I think that's part of the journey of being mm -hmm. human. However, I've witnessed a lot of people get caught in the ice bath breathwork trap where they continually go through and just they just regulate at that same level and never fully initiate themselves into the next layer. Oh, thank you so much for speaking to this, Jacob. I, I really set the, the ceiling for so many people. Mm -hmm. And then they get, they're in denial. Like they, they stay in the communities that excite that behavior. Like you come to the bra, you come in the ice bath, come, yeah, yeah, cool. And just get stuck there and i see it play out in their relationships where like their relationships like fail they 
get to that point where we need to choose, like, do we want to move together or break apart? And they just, they just don't step over that threshold, right? They don't go into the dungeon and slay the dragon or whatever it is they need to do. Like, they just miss out. So like, what, what do you think it is for men that really gives them that shock, that kick in the pants, that dynamite up the ass, whatever it is that's like, look at it. That's like that's sort of where men's work comes in for me. Right. Uh, and my my predominant role of men's work is to create men who have the capacity to be responsible for what they truly desire. And anything that stands in the way of that responsibility is what we what we process. Mm. So some men want like men will tell me that they want a relationship and they want to have children, yet their actions, their energy and their intention do not resonate with that. So I'm yeah. like, cool, let's just bring congruence to that. Yeah. So it's yeah. all about bringing congruence to that that process for me, man. And uh, what one of my favorite teachers, John Wineland, he studied with David Data. He's just incredible incredible man i just i worship his his he's great yeah. his, his energy is so like mm. just like pure like kingly presently mm. love he's just got all of that totally yeah, yeah and he's been deep in the work for many years man there's no one there's no denying the fact that he has deepened his himself but also just like honored his path into this work <sighs> He said this a few times on calls that I've, I've been on community calls. Is men will practice over a broken heart. So this is where the, the ice bath, the breath work, the, the regulating, regulating, regulating. If you're regulating rather than actually obliterating that identity that, that's holding you back, you are not actually seeing what I believe is the true cycles that men go through to experience the full journey of manhood. How we do that is initiation. Mm. So regulation is great, but if you're regulating above a broken heart, then you're just you're, you're just putting a bandaid on a broken leg. This is why initiation is the true is a true tenet or a true value or a true foundational concept for masculine culture, mm. because it allows you to go through the cycles of manhood from boy to from 12 to 14 years old. You shift from boy to training to become a man, and 17 to 20 you go from being in that apprentice stage of evolving, growing physically, mentally, spiritually into this man who then has to have responsibility for himself he's no longer at the care of another man and then from man we go into warrior we can call it warrior out there adventuring finding the skill sets experiencing life and then from warrior we go into leader and then we start to lead which means that we start to lead we, we move up in our career or we start a business or we claim dominion over a family we say i want you to be my wife i want to have children with you i want to own this home we claim responsibility and the way that we claim responsibility is holding deep respect and reverence for that which we care for so that's what responsibility truly is and if that responsibility isn't based on a deep cultural value set it then just becomes a way for us to externalize our worth i'm only worthy if i have this job i'm only worthy if i have this woman i'm only worthy if i have this house rather than i have a responsibility to honor my desires through respecting that which i care for and then it keeps going from leader to chief chief into elder elder into training for ancestry man which is a whole another spiritual concept which can go on and on and on wow jacob bro <laughs> i talk about this a lot man this is something that i'm yeah yeah, I'm writing a whole book on it called Becoming the Mountain, uh -huh. which is a pretty much a whole process of how to how to become in, at the like the embodied representation of of true masculinity in the modern world for men. So I'm deep in this work at the moment, bro. So the, a lot of it's flowing because I've been yeah definitely uh, sifting through the, the the dirt to find those gold nuggets. Uh, I hear there's there's so many gold nuggets. Like this is your like this is a this is a legacy like you're speaking mm. to here, like a real like a manual and a way of life for mm. not just men. Man, mankind like it's like i'm getting goosebumps here like this is this is this is the juice like this is the raw piece of like what i i feel like people that work in the relationship space are really here for mm. you know like to create this not only the vision and the framework like cool this is how you get here you got to do this you got to step through this initiation you got to do this you got to surround yourself with people that are going to challenge you and do the things like and share your vision right because then when you mm. share your vision someone hears it and goes oh how are you doing with that vision mm. where are you at with that where'd you get stuck you know oh jacob bro <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> um, rage. You touched on like what was it? You had a particular name for it. Ra um, Un unbridled. Unbridled rage. Great. I personally love rage work and like wrath and all of that stuff. So for you, what's been your journey with um, rage and unbridled rage? What I describe rage as a reservoir of unfelt emotion or unfelt anger, and what that really boils down to is raw life force energy. So a lot of men don't they they don't have access to that infinite life force because they've been storing this rage age or this 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 red they've got a reservoir of rage that they've been pushing down pushing down pushing down and then to at any point that they tap into that 
they lose their ability to control it. And that's one thing that men have been shamed for is their destructive ways of the past. So for me, rage really is something that needs to be cleared for us to get access to other emotions. Because we refuse to feel rage or feel that anger, we then can't feel sadness. We can't truly feel happiness. We can't deepen down into compassion, love, uh, acceptance, forgiveness. We can't feel the grief. A lot of people swirl above rage and stay in sort of like, a, I'm, a, I'm bitter, I'm frustrated, I'm upset, but they never go into the the core of it, explode, experience the, the, the clearing of that emotion to access the deep pain, the deep suffering, the deep longing for something that they never got mm. or the loss of something that they thought they'd have forever. So this is something that I, I support men through in an attempt. And I say an attempt because I'm not here to fix and in an attempt to give them the capacity to expand their emotional range, but also be able to tap into that life force so they can channel it, so they can use anger as a, as a, as a healthy emotion, so they can use joy, so they can use compassion, so they can actually be like, oh, grief is beneath this anger right now what am i what 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 am i not accepting as the truth and what am i trying to hide from it might be that you know for me you know i've, I've, I've had friends i've lost friends to suicide and there's some of my friends that still don't accept the grief they still ho- hover above it and i've got to be like fuck man like there's something here for you and it's a true letting go but yeah essentially bro i see rage as a, as a access a rage process as a way to access emotional range but then also to clear the channel for life force to move more freely and yeah. then it's the the process of learning how to use that life force and reprogramming the mind to be like, cool, I'm allowed to be, as I, I, I can be assertive. Mm-hmm. I can be powerful. I can be direct. And that is coming from a healthy place rather than from stored, a reservoir that is stored up. So if someone challenges me, they just get the direct life force that is present in that moment, not this years and years of stored emotion. <laughs> and I just blast them and project everything. <laughs> which it's not uncommon no, because and, you haven't been and given the space. Totally, and it's required. Like mm. I really feel like when you can embody that rage, like there's so much love in it too. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, look, brother, pull your head out of your ass. Like just be mm. able to like, you, you told me this story before. Like I know this. Are you going to actually do the thing this week? You know, mm. like it's such a, a loving presence in that anger. And like for me, like my dad suppressed all of his, and he still does, right? Mm. So like, he's a super passive man who tries to meditate his rage away. And then I took that on board in my relationships. Whenever I felt angry, I'd be like, no, I'm not allowed to express this, you know, and then suppress it all. And it wasn't until I did like rage release work um, under core energetics. I don't know if you've heard of core energetics or Alexander right. Lowen or Wilhelm Reich. Mm-hmm. So like, techniques that specifically aimed at working at parts of the body, like the pelvis to sexual rage, the back for like resentment rage, the front of the chest for opening the heart rage, all this, all this kind of like all this, this technology. But it wasn't until I was able to feel that rage that I was able to access the grief. Like just decades of grief of mm. like, like starting relationships and then planning a way out, not fully committing to people, like agreeing to do things, saying yes when I meant no, like all of this stuff. But yeah, like I totally that rage, that vitality piece, like the life force energy, mm. like totally, bro. And it, to, to be able to hold that rage, I've spoken about rage before and I, I get people coming onto my comments saying, oh no, rage is like, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not a healthy emotion or whatever it is. I'm like, no, nah, it's like, it's a, it's a key component, especially for men to be able to wield it in a way that's indicative of their integrity of what it is that whatever it is that they want to say and whatever it is they want to speak to otherwise i don't i can't try i, I find it really challenging to trust a man who isn't in his rage I'm like, who the fuck are you really like i'm i can feel you're holding something back from me and i know if i don't acknowledge that and face that at some point there's going to be a betrayal i can't turn my back on you i need to keep you in my peripheral so mm. i love that you spoke to rage and so for you like what what are the things that you do to excite rage to to bring it to the forefront I have a, like, I have a whole workshop that I run on that very predominantly, which yes. is very, very, very confronting for <laughs> men. But uh, yeah, man, we, we we face off and have a have an experience where we we tap into like we, we create a safe space for your chaos. Great, you to completely lose control. And in that, we have a group of men hold you in that as we draw forth, we draw that out of you, we call that forward, we call you into it, and it's a it's a dance, it's a real dance of of my ability to drop into my dark masculine and and, and <sighs> challenge that person and call them forward into theirs and meet that and literally i see it as a melting together rather than a destroying of something yeah and we've had these view and like we have a whole like i i I frame it all beautifully and we have a whole leading in and a leading out process for it so men will experience like the the slow build up until the point we do all the 
we get clear on what the story is, we, we write it down, we do all of the, we get clear on what the experience is, we get clear on what it is that we want to address, who it is that we want to address, and then we step into the space ready to somatically release it. And yeah, man, it's amazing to see what, what physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually opens up for these men. Because mm. it really is a holistic approach to, you know, we've had guys heal relations, like heal something from 30, 40 years ago. We've had guys have massive, massive, you know, that have had body work and have had all of these people look at certain areas of their body and we've taken them through this process and it's actually cleared a physical issue in their back, in their lower back. And it's like, and you know, and these guys are going through it and we we are so, the the, the men, the men's work that I, I partake in and the men that I, I, I trust in this are, are incredibly grounded in their nurturer as well. So not only are they able to bring their dark masculine, but then we nurture the men almost as if they're a newborn out of this. We uh-huh. give them the space to really uh, sink into the love and the gentleness and the warmth of brotherhood mm-hmm. which can be sometimes lost if you've grown through or if men's work has been you found men's work through that resilience building rah rah we're warriors we fight we peel, you know we, we, we are here to be this 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 and uh the lover can sometimes almost be negated because it can be almost like a people pleaser it yeah be a little too soft whereas i'm i'm predominantly probably more in my my shamanic guy like to get esoteric philosophical but the lover is such a beautiful energy that for men to have intimacy it's it's a really healthy healthy practice especially coming out of such a drastic explosive experience <sighs> wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love it dude I, i'm loving this i'm having a mad bromance right now <laughs> i'm like i, I i've I, you've not been on my radar before until quite recently. Like, where's this guy come from? I'm like, I, in awe and honored, bro. One other thing that I wanted to share about uh, about, about rage is we take rage as something that we very seriously in men's in our men's work. But what we also do is we we create a space where we do something called radical honesty. So we get into a space where we all offer, even if it's a projection or if it's true expression or whatever, we we offer radical honest feedback to each other so what that can look like is like we've had men that have been overweight in our men's group slightly not not drastically but just 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 sloppy and one of the men has who's really into his fitness really powerful has had to say hey bro i don't trust you because you are not honoring your body it's like you're fat but what 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 that means when i see that you're not looking after your body is that i can't trust you if something if shit hits the fan or if i need to be held the way that you're looking after yourself i don't believe you can look after me and that's like fuck him that's a that's a that's a knife to the heart that's a true like to me that is the integrated like i can bring that level of direct assertive aggression to the space now because we've cleared all of our old shit and we can have those those almost those refined sniper like dialogue that allows us to support each other in seeing where we are not honoring ourselves deeply yeah so that's sort of the integration piece that i see that comes after this big explosive rage which is kind of like the breath work when you have the big breath work trauma release you can get addicted to doing that over and over again and it yeah. feels fucking phenomenal it's a yeah. roller coaster so what we do is we, we 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 have practices to actually channel that life force and use it in a way that we cultivate honest direct feedback which then filters out into being able to set boundaries with our lovers being able to ask for the promotion at work being able to start the side hustle and ask for a day off and go back to four days a week be able to whatever it is have have a harder conversation ring up and get a better deal with the with the bank or with the totally the so it becomes all about like cultivating that power and that presence to be a unfuckwithable force oh in the name of love of totally jacob <laughs> <laughs> How often yeah. do you run this workshop, bro? Like, is this the rage? Or is it like a cyclical thing or one once a year? Like, how often do you do it? I did it once last year, man. And we, we run we run men's workshops and I do I do a, a, a variety of things. At the moment, I'm currently coaching uh, men's coaches who are, or men that are stepping into their own coaching. Great. And we have this beautiful uh, annual event called the Gathering of Men. So we do a, an annual gathering. But from that, we, we, we break off and we do workshops throughout the year. So the next one we've got coming up next month is called the Wild Man. Awesome. So it's going to be a, it, it's truly just primal expression, but I'm going to be running the sacred rage again uh, in the next couple of months because I know I can feel that it's, it's needed. I can feel that I've been, I, I, I do it and I'm like, it's amazing. But then I forget <laughs> that it, there's more men that need it. There's more men that need it. At the moment, I'm, I'm currently seeing the, the need for me to train other men in this yes. capacity. So yes. then we can bring the work more regularly rather than just every now and then. Yes, yes, yes to all of this. Yes to all of this. Mm-hmm. And I 
I love that you're leading other men to lead their own men's groups because I like I've seen like other men's groups formats before, like MKP and some mm. other ones. And I, I feel like um, they get a bit stale for me. Like I'm like cool, it's all heady stuff and blah blah blah. But like the real challenging, mm. like the real grit that you need to like feel the the terror of like someone confronting you on your bullshit. Like it was mm. it was missing. What I'm hearing, bro, is you, you you're creating this new way, which I'm so excited about. Like I want to get I want to back you like 100, percent bro. This is like yeah. this is. This is great. <laughs> yes, bro. Yes. So, so you got what you're saying? Uh, so that piece around MKP and those guys, they're, they're incredible because they've done such a great job of laying the foundation. So yes. they've, they've built from 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 years and years and decades. And I honor MKP, real men, men energy, mm. men's well-being, all of these things that really cater to that. I'm 33 now. So that probably the guy's 40 plus, realistically. Um, they do have younger guys coming through and they're starting to see that. But if you even understand the concept of a men's circle, so we look at a circle, yeah. it, is, it is closed. So what that means is that if you have a men's circle that is based on it being closed and it being no way to sort of move through it you get stuck in these these circles and what can happen is they can become just a, a relief station so it can come, become a place where you go you vomit out whatever it is you need to get rid of and then you go back into your life you fill up the bucket and then you come back and you tip it out you come back and we can create this separation between men's work and real life and that's something that i believe is men's work does almost need to have its own category where you go and do it but how is that being integrated so one one of the things in Native American, and I'm only just learning this, so so this is this is from my perspective, is that the circle is actually a 13 point circle, and it actually breaks off like that. So it's got a broken piece, and it spirals. So what happens is that the circle is something that you will spiral oh. upward through, rather than be closed in. So this the circle is actually a spiral. Right. So this is where we see, and this broken point here, this is the the edge. So at every point where you're about to move into another level of responsibility, from boy to man man to leader or man to warrior warrior to leader leader to chief chief to elder we're seeing this point where you have to actually step off the edge and trust in the initiation process trust in the death of your old identity so that's what happens in a lot of these men's groups is guys get stuck in them and they never actually experience that ongoing initiation which has them held in not a loop but just held in that 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 that, that way of being and never really invites them into a deeper uh, level of responsibility mm. which some men don't want which is okay but at the same time i believe every man has this natural desire to go through those those layers of responsibility or those initiations into the next chapter of, of what it means to be a man yeah i i totally agree i guess like for me, me and my journey of watching that unfold for myself and other men is like a, a, a frustration at that denial of not wanting to step into their greatness and then not being mindful and watching me use that frustration against them like criticizing them and assuming that they're ready to receive that kind of criticism to step up you know like wake up step up like what are you doing like yeah, you're in a relationship that sucks or like, you're not supporting your woman like whatever it is like what is it that like, being able to be mindful of that and how to call them in right yeah. how do I how do I call you in like, how do I and women too for me it, it, I, I work with both. How do I call you in too? Like staying with men or not being able to speak to men that are not stepping into their greatness. And I hear that women see this in their partners, right? Mm. And, I, and I had and I had partners where they said, "John, like you're not being who you can be," and all this kind of like, being attached to the fantasy of who I was and not knowing what to do. Yeah, where would you go with that? This has been an ongoing like internal dialogue for me. What problem are we solving, and where are we going? So it's all great to solve problems. It's all great to like give space to to feel, but where are we going? Where are we going? And this is where I become really, I get fucking fired up, man. Like, Cause this is really the, the thing that sits beneath a relationship. The thing that sits beneath community, the thing that sits beneath nations is what I call culture. And really, man, we're in a global movement. We're exposed globally now to things that can affect all of us on the same level. The pandemic, it was a global, a global experience. So what culture are we creating from a global level? What foundational values are, are there within that culture of humanity that we're honoring through our work? It's a big, it's a big, fucking topic it's huge it's massive it breaks my brain but it's something that i'm working toward so oh. when we so yeah so when we have these conversations around men like men's work or, or or leading or what is it that you need to do your path is your path there's you cannot any any attempt to deny it is only going to cause more resistance and no matter what you're going to get to the end of your life and it's all perfect i get that but there will be resentment there will be regret because you didn't honor what would create fulfillment based on the fact that you needed to be in control or had to have a level of certainty which limited you walking your path mm. 
Mm. And that's that, that's indicative of all men, bro. So for me, with men's work, it's like, oh, I, I serve the men. And at any point, I feel like I'm no longer in service to them. I'm like, okay, it's time for you to walk your path. It's time for you to break free from the circle, go and do your thing and know that it's, you know, I'm still here no matter what. Mm. So it's, um yeah, man. And I see this second layer of it is like, where are the leaders creating communities, but not finding a way to come together as leaders and allow those communities to experience cross-pollination? Mm, yes, mm. totally, totally. I love what you also spoke to there about it's all perfect. That that this, and like for me, I always, I receive that as partial. Like, yeah, sure, it's all perfect, sure. And like, do you want to do your thing? Like, do you really want to step into your purpose? Mm. And I know there's, there's moments when I challenge men and women that want to say, oh, it's all, it's all, it's all good, it's all perfect, it's all good. But then I, the undertone of their language, of what they're really saying, I hate my life, I hate my job, I hate being with my kids, I hate this partner I'm with. But it's all perfect. It's like, well, is it though? And then doubling back under the the, the culture that we're creating, I'm like, you really want to lie about that? Mm. Like, you really want to say it's all perfect as a spiritual bypass, but deep down, the culture that you're reinforcing, the family system that you're reinforcing, is out of integrity with who you really are at the core. Is that mm. what you want to build, really? And then how to challenge that right mm. it's like I, I, I shake this what are you doing <laughs> well it, it requires you to be constantly in control too you have to constantly so i liken it this is a, a an analogy that i love it's like so we have the the masculine feminine let's look at the, the feminine as the water the masculine as the as the banks so a healthy experience of masculine feminine dynamics is that the the, the river banks naturally guide the flow of the water and healthily it will find its natural course and there'll be these beautiful bends and this beautiful flowing water and when the water flows it keeps the stones clean so there's no there's not too much moss or algae growing and when the water flows there's somewhere for the fish to continue to swim upstream and it's beautiful reeds and there's trees overhang it's a beautiful experience if there's no riverbanks then the water does not have direction so it just becomes a swamp yeah we can see that happen when men or even anyone who doesn't have a strong masculine connection or a connection to their masculine they, they lose their sense of direction their momentum there and then what happens is if men and this is something that i see men create or women create with their masculine they create a dam so the water is contained within the the banks of the dam and that's where we have to control everything we have to like make sure that there's water flowing in and out of the dam we have to make sure that the ph is right we've got to we're in constant constant control and management of the energy mm -hmm. and if we never actually let go and allow life to flow or the river to naturally find its way we're going to constantly have to be activated our nervous system is going to be always thinking about something yeah and this is where you came back to everything's perfect the way that i temper that to not bypass is is everything's in balance like everything's balanced but it's not harmonized so whilst there's enough water for everyone to not be thirsty on the earth while there's enough food for no one to starve while there's enough energy in your body to experience all that you desire or to have all the things that you want is it harmonized to the core cultural values that determine the natural law which comes back to yeah a whole nother like it comes back to spiritual concepts yeah natural law yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. wow which for me is like yeah like the the main issue i see is that people are holding without realizing that if they were allowed to like soften both men and women soften it and and release this idea that they have to be something or own something or have dominion over something to feel worthy then the the letting go will reveal or at least something will bubble up that is that is in resonance or will mm -hmm. harmonize you to what you truly are here to experience whether it's a relationship a job a, a, a chance interaction with someone that you then create something with mm -hmm. these have been the, these have been the moments of 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 great or these moments of what we can call synchronicities that have been great for me, man, you know? And and some of them haven't been easy. Some of them have been like, oh, fuck, I'm in a men's group and I want to break out and make my own, men, my, my own men's group. We try to do it together. It doesn't work. We have to have a hard conversation. I spit the dummy. I, I get all frustrated. I project. And then I realize, oh, I was expecting you to create the thing that I want to create for me so I didn't have to take responsibility for it because if it failed, then I wasn't the one failing. It would be you and me failing. Ooh. It's like, fuck, that's codependent. Oh, wow. I've healed that in my love relationship with Meg, but now I've got this codependency with brothers in my men's circle. Okay, I can see that. I want to honor that. Hey, brother, I love you. And as leaders, we have to create this separation so we can both build our communities. But when these communities are built, let's reconnect and see how we can then collaborate on experiences rather than try to be both the leader of the same thing, which yeah. is where each man's kingdom is his kingdom. But what culture are those kingdoms built upon that's huge jacob and where i see we're going is that kings being able to talk to kings being able to talk to kings right 
Mm. And having those cool, let's bring our kingdoms together. You know, like we're not, I'm not competing for your resources. Let's just, let's combine and see we can all go together in the same vision. Because in that, mm. the, 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 the spirituality, the, the community work, I, I do still see where we fall down at that point where men are not allowed, they just don't fall on their sword and like put their hand up and go, you know what, I fucked up or you know, this, you know, or yeah, you no, know I've been jealous of you, brother, from the day dot you know, like your partner or whatever, the life that you've created, you know, I've been trying to sabotage you on the back end, like spreading rumors and secrets. And I was being able to fall on the sword and go, yeah, man, I'm an absolute cunt. If you don't want me around, I'll get it, you know? Mm. But just being able to fall on the sword and go, yeah, I, I value you and I value who you are and I want to move forward with you. Can we make that happen even though after, after the path? And just let it land where it lands. Totally, man. And, and one thing that the modern world really can confuse men around is like, our relationships are not like women's. That's a whole nother conversation around gender, identity, sexuality, masculine, feminine. That's a whole, it's just a cauldron at the moment. I think it's going to get messier before it gets clearer. I like it that way. And it's it get it, real messy. It is what it is. <laughs> but for me, man, like the way I connect with men is a man connecting with another man is very different to the way a woman connects with another woman. Yeah. And I can have a relationship, a deep, loving, intimate relationship with another man and not speak to him for a year. Yeah, absolutely. And then yeah. when we catch up, whether it's for a schooner at the pub, whether it's to go out for a hike, whether it's to have a barbecue, at, you know, or, or meet up at a, at a friend's wedding or a funeral, or for whatever reason, we cross paths in whatever way, shape or form, regardless of what the experience is. It doesn't need to be this sacred, beautiful men's <laughs> circle. It can literally be at the pub having a schooner because I don't fucking discriminate, man. I drink beer. I, you know, I, I enjoy the, the the richness of life. I just make sure I don't lose myself in it. Sure. But, I, there's love there. There's, there's absolutely there's respect, and through that love and respect, we create intimacy. And it doesn't need to be this ongoing. How are you feeling? What are you doing? Are we catching up next week? Mm -hmm. It's like I respect you, and I know that you're out there building your life. And I have men that in my circle. You know, I surf with guys regularly. I, I, I hike with guys regularly. I have my men's circles, but there's other men in my life that I hold dear. They're relationships that have their one every one to two years. We we connect just through, through the synchronicity of life and these moments of grace. And we meet each other and whatever the conversation is, it is, but there is this relationship that is inherently different that between men, a man relating with a man and a woman relating with a woman in regards to that, I guess that brotherhood versus that sisterhood. Totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. I've got a mate that I know from high school. We can connect with like every six months, sometimes it's a year. Yeah. Sometimes I'll, I'll miss his birthday and I'll call him up a week later. We still catch up, you know, it's mm. like this, we've been mates for, for ages I mm. totally get this. And then with the women in my life, they need more. Like my mom in particular, or my partner or somebody else, my sister. Mm. They're like, okay, cool. You want this little bit more and I'll give as much as I want to give. Mm -hmm. um, and, and being mindful of when they need to go mm. and go to their own thing. Like, yeah, cool. That's enough. I'm done. This, this conversation is done. You go do your own thing now. Yeah, to I love this. I love this. Is there anything that you would like to speak to, Jacob? Like in your, what you see in the world, what we'd like to achieve or what your long-term vision is that you'd love to see on earth? Amazing, man. Thank you for, for asking that because it's something that's been really moving through not only myself, but my, my community is this birthing of a new story. When we look at men's work in particular, or we look at the current structure of the world, it has what um, another guy, Mark Gaffney, I'm really into at the moment. He's a really great philosophical, he's got this ecstatic, urgent joy to him. And he's like, fucking full on, bro. He's, you've got to really be present to listen because he's fast, he's precise, he's awesome. He speaks about how the current, the current story or the current reality is built on win-lose metric. So it's built on, for me to get something, I need to take something from you. So I win, you lose. It's all built on competition. And the beauty of that is that we have sport. Sport drives that. We have business. Business drives that. But then what do we do sport and business for? To create abundance or we to create power, to create a sense of self, to connect deeper with others. Mm. So the piece that's missing there is intimacy. And when we bring our business drive or our business program or our sporting program into intimacy, we lose the magic of it because we're using win-lose metrics. We're using competition. We're using what do I get? Or there needs to be an agreement that says, I get this, you get that. Whereas love doesn't really work that way, in my opinion. So in this new, this new story that uh, we are birthing as a men's group and what we're wanting to step into that we're creating, especially with the gathering of men, the gathering of men is a convergence of communities of men to remember the culture 
that we all sit upon. And for that to occur, man, we're going through some dark shit. Our own challenges of like, oh, I don't want to connect with that guy because he's got a he's got another men's group. It's like, no, that's why you connect with him as a leader and call him to come and sit with the other leaders so we can bring everyone together. The way that I see this, and this is just my vision and I'm going to own it, claim it because it is what it is, is together we want to invocate a new way of being by coming together and sounding the drumbeat of brotherhood. And the way that, and to bring this into tangible, like real world stuff is I see this, you know, I see Australia as the base or as the root chakra of the world. It's a real grounded, it's a real earth-based continent. <laughs> but I see this as five, like my, my, my vision is 5,000 men in circle in the center of Australia, in the desert, away from the nourishment of the coast, away from the nourishment of the lush green coastal land. We go into the core of who we are. We go into the dry nothingness. We go into the desolate. And we, we, we invocate this new way of being from the, the, the set, from the core. And 5,000 men in circle, chanting, singing, and dancing for three days. And that's, that's my vision that I hold of, of, of us men going to do that in service to this new, this new story. Not in service to being the best men's group. Not in service to, I'm going to be more, more of my warrior, more of my lover. We are there in service to the, the great she, to the, the, to the narrative of humanity that is asking for the next chapter to reveal itself. And that's really what men's work is about. For me, it's about its ability to have reverence for the great she, which is all of creation, which is the force of creation that moves through all beings, all things. Goosebumps, Jacob. You're speaking my language, bro. You articulate mm. so perfectly with such like, vision and intention and love. I see this vision and yeah, I'm backing this, bro. This mm. is huge. This is exactly it. From beginning to end, bro, like the being birthed by women and then being able to honor that whole process and then throughout our entire lives, like being invited into initiation by women. And then cool, this is of service to you. <laughs> like yeah. you, you're always in service to us. It's not like a it's not a codependent thing. It's like I'm just in, I'm just in, I just want to serve you in whatever way that's possible. Yeah, wow, Jacob. Wow. How can people get involved in this vision, bro? What can we do? The main thing right now is the gathering of men. So this is our annual convergence it's an it's a four-day immersion just out the back of the gold coast in queensland australia and this is a an event for men to come together like this isn't like the depths of men's work but this is a way for us to come together and build relationships across communities this is a super affordable way for us to come together every year so this is not really driven by okay i want to make loads of money from this okay i want this to be highly profitable i still want to make money don't get me wrong that's a part of being in this modern world but We've created this event as a four-day experience for men to be in nature, away from the responsibilities of the modern world, where they can challenge themselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, celebrate each other, like celebrate masculinity without the tall poppy syndrome of you're oh, pull, trying to pull each other down. <laughs> and then to just experience what it's like to have natural conversations at the depth that brotherhood offers. We're serving like fully organic meals catered full organic because we don't but we don't budge on our values our values my values and one that i hold for all men is that we eat nourishing organic meals why would we feed ourselves shit in the space where we're doing deep healing lineage clearing work so we eat no, nourishing organic meals we, we remove the technology we deepen we sleep on the earth we can't mm -hmm. we don't we don't stay in houses we don't elevate ourselves off the earth we have this connection with the earth and yeah man it's a it's a whole experience for 555 bucks and dude that's so cheap it is and people keep telling me that it's so cheap it should it be more i'm like why would it need to be more I'm exactly not i'm not selling it on price i'm selling it on the vision which is this is a stepping stone towards five thousand men in the middle of australia totally and in that's what's in the way for you yeah like if it's that it's just come so come <laughs> yeah it's too cheap and that's and, that, and that's and that's what you're using you don't believe that there's value there for you totally. let, 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 let me tell you about this vision let me share a little more about what this means as a stepping stone towards a greater invocation of the new way and this is what i'll circle all the way back bro and i feel like this is a beautiful thing you know when i was in peru and i had those 16 women around me i was like this is beautiful to witness the force of creation but who here is going to help me build the structure for that creation to flow in service to all of humanity i want more men here holding the frame I want more men deepening into becoming the, the collective nervous system that holds the true force of creation that moves through all of us to then create this next, this next wave of, of thriving, of harmonization. So for me, this is not just about one man having a better experience here on earth. This is about starting with the heart of every individual man, but then seeing how that ripples out. So this is the core 
it, it, you know, this is what we call it, the gathering of men. We're men, we gather. We have an experience that brings us all together, that anchors us into a collective heartbeat. We are men. We stand for this culture. We go out into our communities and we live that. And every year we come back and every year we come back and every year we come back until we create a flexion point where there is enough of us to go and create this invocation of the new way, which is grounded spirituality, which was what was missing from the start of my journey. So normally what is missing is what you will seek, which becomes the part of you that you're bringing forth for everyone. So yeah, man, like that, that start of my spiritual journey of being surrounded by women activated my desire for more men in my life, which is what I see when I say more men, I say more men on this path or more men aware of this, this, this journey, which is then now what's driving me to create this on a wider scale, because I can go and hold space for women in any day of the week. And I can hold you in your, your, your rage and all of this sort of stuff. But then I go back then I've got to leave and go home to my woman. Yeah. Go home to my children, my future children, go home to my, my family. Yeah. I would rather activate the hearts of as many men as possible. So those men can go and meet the, their, their woman, their partner, in that space and i don't actually have to be there this is a real stepping back for me like you said uh, you used the word legacy legacy transcends validation man mm. legacy really is in service true unconditional service where you don't need to be present you don't even need to know what's happening it's just offering the true gift of your heart without any condition this is the ongoing challenge of of, of be, being a man which i willingly and <laughs> graciously accept the burden of <laughs> Jacob, I think that's the perfect note to end on. Mm. I feel truly humbled by you. Thank you so much for sharing your heart, your embodiment, your journey, mm. and your vision, and um, and opening opening yourself up. Mm. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Amazing, man. Yeah, thanks for one thing that I love, man. For me, like I love to express. So for you to just ask those questions and prompt me, I, I get so much uh, nourishment from that. So thank you for reaching out and thank you for being curious and asking me about these things because they're really alive in me right now. And it's just reminding me that I to speak more on this because this is definitely something that I, I love to do. And yeah, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of my heart, man. And you're welcome. Yeah, I'd love to hear you speak more about it. All right, bro. Big love. Big love. <laughs>